the Senses Symposium is meant to bring together artists, scientists, humanists of various flavors, including anthropologists and philosophers, to think about embodiment, the senses, and how we understand those things scientifically, humanistically, culturally, philosophically. That wasn't quite as nice. No, um, it was a little harsh. We're focusing at the symposium musically on the work of Alvin Lussier, who's been working on the border between music and acoustics for his entire career. I am sitting in a room, the same one you are in now. I am recording the sound of my speaking voice. I am sitting in a room, the same one you are in now. I am recording the sound of my speaking voice. I am sitting in a room, the same one you are in now. I am recording the sound of my speaking voice. The work that he'll be performing I am sitting in a room, exploits the resonant frequencies of whatever room it is that he's sitting in. And through a process of iterative feedback, amplifies those frequencies until the sound that remains is very difficult to interpret as speech. I'm sitting in a room is one of the most self-contained pieces of art that has ever or could ever exist. And you wrote me in an email that the idea for the piece had been triggered by the work of Bose. I had worked with a scientist. He said, you know, last night I went to a lecture at MIT by this man Bose who's developing a loudspeaker. You're using this in a reverberant field. And maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. And he uh, tests his speakers by recycling sounds back into the speakers. I thought, well, that's something I should try out, and I did. And that's how I got this piece. I stayed up all night doing it, you know, to avoid sounds from outside, and I thought it was wonderful, but somehow it didn't hit me till later, I don't think, how interesting it was. The Center for Art, Science, and Technology is an institute-wide initiative to try and foster this very important discussion about how technology changes us and how we might want to change technology in addressing our place in the environment, in the city, in the world. And reverb is a primary ingredient in music production. This is an example of, of a song that you guys probably know. It's For the Love of Money by the OJs. And I've got just the introduction here. It's just a bass line. And what the engineer did is he plays the first little riff, which is the first five seconds here, with quite a lot of reverb on it. Sounds like it's in a stadium. And then he turns it off over the second repetition. <laughs> So the, the fact that these things are used as, as tricks in music production, again, is, is evidence that the brain has got a lot of sensitivity to this. The synergies, the serendipities of being in the same space, of, of having an artist sitting next to a neurologist or a sound artist sitting next to a technician who does simulations of sound. I mean, these are the kinds of serendipitous encounters that I think create entirely new realms of culture. And that's, I think, something exciting that MIT does really well. Please welcome Alvin Lucier. Somebody said my music is about revealing sounds that are always there, but you've never heard them exactly. I am sitting in a room, the same one you are in now. I am recording the sound of my speaking voice and I'm going to play it back into the room again and again until the resonant frequencies of the room reinforce themselves so that any semblance of my speech, with perhaps the exception of rhythm, is destroyed. I am sitting in a room, the same one you are in now, 
I am recording the sound of my speaking voice. Is what we are listening to the result of creative control on his part? Is it the result of a kind of weirdly alien, inhuman emanation from within what we take to be a normal human body? MIT's been an important place for me. You are important to MIT as oh, well. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I mean, our students know your music, often because my colleagues and I play it for them, but, but they hear it, they get it. 